Maybe I'm just not a cool kid like the TikTokers, who knows? Today we are talking about hashtag regrets. I know, I'm cool. But I have a full uh, basket of makeup here that I kind of regret purchasing if I'm being completely honest with myself. So let's just get started. Before we do, let's do the YouTube things. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that notification bell, share it around the socials. It really, really helps my channel out. We're trying to get to 2K and uh, Let's just get started. So I'm just gonna like pull product out by product. Um, just because I regret purchasing this makeup, by the way, doesn't mean that you have to if you've purchased it and you love it. We're all unique, beautiful, individual people. And so that means that we all have different personal opinions as well. So this is just my opinion. Yours can be different and that's a-okay, my friend. So first product is the Huda Beauty Naughty Nude Palette. I regret purchasing this palette. Now, I've done a review on it. I liked it in the review. And to be honest, I do quite like the palette. I do. It's a nice palette. The mattes work lovely. It's a beautiful color scheme. The only reason why I regret purchasing it is honestly, I just don't think I like the Huda Beauty Shimmer formula. Like the actual metallic shades. They're quite flaky and hard to use almost. And I just don't like, I don't have time for that, to be honest. And then against like my Sydney Grace, my Pat McGrath and my Luna Beauty and my Natasha Denona and all of the other beautiful palettes that I have in my collection, I literally never reach for this. Like if you look at it, it basically looks untouched. And like a lot of my Huda Beauty palettes definitely look like that. I just, I never reach for her palettes and I pretty much have them all, so yeah regrets. Next on the uh, regret train is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Luminous Foundation. So I'm sure most of you have seen this foundation before. These are, this isn't like a new product or anything. Um, I purchased this like last year sometime in a sale. It's an expensive foundation too. I think it was like 70 or 80 Australian dollars and I, I did get on sale though. And I don't like it. I don't like it. If I had to do my time over, I 100% would not purchase this. I can't seem to like make it work for me to a point where I still want to use it. Like usually if I have foundations that I don't super, super love, I'll still use them in like YouTube videos and stuff like that because most of the time if I'm doing YouTube videos, I will kind of just wash my makeup off afterwards. I know that seems like a waste, but honestly, it's like the process of putting makeup on for me that I truly love, not the actual wearing of the makeup. So, I mean, I love wearing it as well, but you know what I mean? It's like baking a cake, right? I'll bake a cake, but then once I'm done, I'm like, I don't even want, I don't want to eat the cake anymore. So anyway, basically what I'm trying to say is I can't even make this work for me in that respect. So I just really wish I hadn't bought it, if I'm being honest with you. I just can't, I can't make it work for me. It's this really weird mix of matte and dewy and it settles in fine lines. It settles in pores. I just look really old when I wear it and, um... I'm trying to take years off, okay? Next up is a product that uh, I purchased because Tati came back to the internet and did like a things I'm loving since I've disappeared off the internet video. And she talked about this product and I was like, well, if Tati loves it, I'm gonna go get it. And uh, I hate it. And this is a product that I really don't like. So this is the Flower Beauty Gel Crush Lip and Cheek Stick. It's probably super overexposed. Basically, it looks like a mini um, deodorant, like stick deodorant. And it's a really pretty color and all that jazz, you know, it's like a pink. But see how sheer this is? So I don't like this because it's like a really sticky lip balm, like a really, really sticky lip balm. It does smell good, um, but it just, it's like the, okay, here's who, who would like this. If you're someone that has really, really dry skin, loves like a, a really dewy glowy serum is like a really natural makeup wearer just wants like that barely there kind of makeup look then you and you don't need like want to set your makeup at all and you don't mind that little sticky feeling then you'll love this product but anyone else is gonna hate it because it's so friggin sticky and it also doesn't show up very well like it's so faint I just freaking hate it and it was like a drugstore product so it wasn't expensive and that's fine but like I don't even like using it as a lip balm because it's not even a comfortable lip balm so yeah I just I don't vibe with it in any way soz we all saw this coming <laughs> but um whatever Marc Jacobs the um like coffee like three pan face palette now in my defense 
I actually really like the products in here and I love the packaging. I really do. I just regret buying this product because it breaks me out really badly. And I knew that it was going to. And at the time when I first was using this, I was like, I don't think it is breaking me out. I'm a big fat liar. It totally is. Like I've used it a couple of times since then and I got proper, proper breakouts from it. So I just, I can't use it because it's like not worth it to me to like get full blown kind of almost break like acne from it and the smell of it is it's just the most disgusting thing and I know that they're like reformulating because they're going with a new lab and I really hope to god that they change the scent and everything on their products because I hate it and I regret purchasing it because I knew that was going to happen but I just loved the packaging so I learned my lesson this is a product that you are either so far on the train with me that you're like, yes, hashtag regrets, or you're like, what the hell are you talking about? That product is amazing. So this is the Fenty Beauty Skin Tint. I have seen people like absolutely adore this skin tint more than like life itself. And I have seen people like absolutely loathe this skin tint and I'm on the loathe train. I can't get this skin tint to work for me. I don't get what people love about it and regardless of the coverage level right let's take away coverage and pretend like my skin's like a model's perfect skin and uh, I'm looking for that barely there look this doesn't even look good on my skin like that because it settles so weirdly in my pores and my fine lines it makes my skin look dry and I don't have dry skin like it looks like it sits on top of my skin and not like melds beautifully into my skin I cannot I've tried my fingers I've tried a brush I've tried a sponge I can't get this freaking thing to work for me and every time I wear it I hate what I look like so I can't get on board of the Fenty Beauty skin tint train I'm sorry I I want to but just I just can't next up is this one <laughs> so this is the L'Oreal 24-hour fresh wear foundation I bought this because it had like the really big TikTok moment where everyone was like oh my god this is amazing and I saw so many people likening it to I want to say Hollywood flawless filter maybe but I could be wrong anyway this was a really big moment on TikTok, so I obviously ran out and purchased it. And to be honest, I love the L'Oreal Infallible Foundation. That's one of my top wearing foundations. I love it. So I thought I would really like this, and I don't. I don't find this to be pore smoothing and like... I've seen everyone on TikTok using this to be like a real filtered kind of effect powder and I don't find this powder to do that for me and my skin personally. I find it to make it look quite cakey and heavy looking whereas like the Kosas powder does that for me. It creates that filtered look. So yeah, for me this powder just didn't do what the TikTokers were saying it did. Maybe I'm just not a cool kid like the TikTokers. Who knows? So another foundation that I 100% knew that I was going to regret when I purchased it but I did it anyway for the sake of science. And it is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Foundation. So this is a hydrating foundation. I don't love a hydrating foundation on me. And I knew that going into it. But so many people that I saw loved this foundation. Like I'm talking thinks this foundation is just the absolute bee's knees of foundation. And so I just really had to purchase it and see for myself. And I was right. It really makes me look like a haggard old bag. It adds about 20 years on to my young youthful age so I really regret purchasing this because I knew going into it that it was going to do that because it's just how like my skin kind of works with hydrating foundations and I picked it up anyway and also I read that it had coconut in it before I purchased it and I still purchased it and I very well damn know that coconut breaks me out like a mofo and that's exactly what happened so I can't even like make this work again for like YouTube videos or anything because it just like gives me full bone acne so yeah Hashtag regrets and I want my like 25 Australian dollars back Colourpop. Okay, I'm really going to rile some feathers I feel like in this video, but I'm not having to go at affordable makeup, you guys. It's just, I just don't, I don't vibe with these products like other people seem to, okay? I just don't. I just don't. Uh, e.l.f. <laughs> Cosmetics, the bite size eyeshadow palettes. Everyone freaking raves about these raves i bought this piece of jessica braun like she just she just raves about these little things and it was like seven dollars so i was like why not i don't know why not because i don't like it and even though it was only seven dollars it's just seven dollars sitting there going to waste i shouldn't have purchased it and i knew going into it that i wouldn't use it i won't use it because i don't love small eyeshadow palettes like this but secondly i don't like the quality of this i mean the metallics are okay but everyone was raving about these like 
I'm talking people are like, these are better than high-end eyeshadows, like these are phenomenal, and maybe they are to you, but to me they're not. I'm sorry, I'm just saying it. And I just, I don't like it, I regret purchasing it, and now it's just sitting here. I mean, I'll find someone to give it to, but like... Regrets. Okay, another e.l.f. product that I regret purchasing is the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. Also, look at how disgusting this is. This one isn't even a year old. Look at it. Isn't that disgusting? Uh, I think I'm just going to throw this one out because honestly, it's like disgusting. Oh, it smells off. That is disgusting. This is honestly, this isn't even a year old. Anyway, don't like it. Used it once. Didn't see the hype behind it. Made my under eyes look horrible and kind of never used it again. I don't get it. And now it really is the grossest smell I have actually smelled. So maybe I just got an off one and that's why I don't like it. I don't know, but I regret purchasing it for sure. We're nearly done. I only have about four products left and they are higher end ones. So first up, Westman Atelier, the lit stick. This was expensive, okay? I bought this when Westman Atelier very, very first came out. So this one is definitely off. It still smells completely fine, so I can still kind of use it. I see so many people rave about this. Like, I'm talking, I had this, like, three years ago, I think it was, that I purchased this. When, whenever Westman Atelier very, very first released her brand, because as soon as she released her brand, I purchased the whole thing. I was like, this is amazing. I, I need everything. And all of the other products I love, like the Biscuit Contour Stick, freaking love. Like, I will repurchase that eventually. I just wanted to see the shade range expanded first is what I'm trying to say. Anyway, I don't like this because it's like a sticky balm. So again, if you're one of those people that really likes those kind of sticky, glossy products, like then you'll really like this. It kind of looks like sweat, but it's just so sticky. It feels like when I wear it on my cheeks, unless I like really powder it down, which kind of doesn't make sense because I want to wear it for a highlight. It's like my hair gets stuck to my face. It's like wearing lip gloss and your hair getting stuck to your face. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That's what this product does for me and I don't like it. Like I've seen heaps of people use this as a primer as well. Like I know Kate the Great uses this as a primer. And I guess I could see, like, if you're putting foundation over the top of this, it probably wouldn't make a bad primer, especially if you want, like, a glowy primer, because it's, like, sticky enough that I feel like the foundation would almost grip too. But, yeah, I don't know. It's just not my kind of a product. It's, like, that really natural, like, just, I just woke up like this makeup wearer, and that's just not who I am. I just wasn't born with those genetics, you know what I'm saying? Next up, my good friend, if you've seen my most recent, um... <laughs> makeup release video you are uh, you understand this reference but my dear friend hourglass cosmetics uh this is the vanish concealer i hate it i hate it i don't like it i can't even remember what i said in the review but i'm pretty sure i was like i just don't think it's my fave and i i just don't like it i don't like it at all everyone talks about how full coverage this concealer is i don't know what i'm missing i do not find this to be full coverage I don't know what I'm missing. I really don't. I also really hate the way that this concealer looks on my under eyes. It makes them look really dry. Now, as I've said before, I am a little bit like of a hater towards Hourglass Cosmetics, but the reason why is also because I just don't find their products look good for me. Like I'm like, I paid like 60 or $70 for this freaking concealer and it just does not look good. And it also breaks me out. I have to be so careful to like keep this right underneath my eyes because if I let this like go anywhere else on my face, I a hundred percent will get like a proper breakout from it. So yeah, for the price of it, not stoked. Last two products. Hang in there with me. Uh, the last two are eyeshadow palettes. Now, the first one is the Lime Crime Greatest Hits palette. Now, I don't regret purchasing this palette in terms of the fact that it's a really good quality, beautiful palette. I actually do really quite like this palette. I just never reach for it. I just never reach for it. And I just don't think that the, like, the color scheme is beautiful and everything. I just don't think the quality is, like, as amazing as like my other eyeshadow palettes in my collection, sorry, and like the color story is a little bit of a weird, like whenever I sit down and I'm like, oh, okay, I'll create a look with my like Lime Crime palette, it's just like a bit of a weird color story for me. And I just kind of get a bit uninspired from it, even though individually each one of these eyeshadows are like stunning. So I don't know what it is about this palette, but yeah, I really, 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 really wanted it. Pretty much for that mustard shade, to be honest. I really wanted it. It is really pretty. The color, like, it's a good quality, but if I had my time over, 
I wouldn't purchase it. Like, I really feel like I could have put my money towards, like, something better in my collection that I would use a lot more, if I'm being honest. All right, this last palette, it may upset a couple of you. A couple of you are probably going to be pretty shocked that I'm actually even saying this. But if I'm being really honest with myself, I regret purchasing this. Like, massively regret purchasing this. Like, genuinely regret purchasing it. Uh, this is the Pat McGrath, I know, Venus in Fleurs eyeshadow cord. So this is the one that got released with her blushes. I regret buying this, you guys. I really do. I really, really do. I don't know what I was when this quad kind of came out. I don't normally purchase her quads, to be honest, or her six pan ones. Um, just because I like a bigger eyeshadow palette. I've said this a few times. I'm not someone that really vibes with such a small eyeshadow palette. And I think... Like, I would pick up her eyes her quads that have, like, the four astral shades because, to me, the whole, like, special reason that I love Pat so much is those Blitz astral shades. And I think if I had stopped to think about this quad enough, I would have realized that these aren't Blitz astral shades and I kind of won't... I'm not going to use this a lot. And then I know there was a few reviews that came out before she went live with the collection and people were kind of talking about how flaky these shades were. And I just knew pre-purchasing this, I was like, I just don't think that you're going to like this quad. I just don't think this quad is something that like vibes with your personal makeup style. And I really wish I'd listened to my gut because this was like $80 or something ridiculous like that. And I don't enjoy using it, if I'm being completely honest with you. I don't get a lot of joy out of it, and I don't like this matte shade. I don't reach for it. Like, I have to consciously think about filming with it so that I get some use out of it. And I wish that I had saved my money and either purchased a different color of the blush or the lip products, or even just saved my money, because I just, yeah, I don't, like, this doesn't bring me joy in my collection, which is quite funny, because I wore this eyeshadow palette in my latest I think it was my makeup releases video actually and so many of you commented on my eye look and about how much you loved it and how much you wanted the eyeshadow palette and I was like oh that is really quite interesting because I really despise using this palette if I'm being honest I really do I just don't find them to be the normal Pat McGrath like quality I said it I said it okay it is what it is makeup products I regret purchasing if I have my time over you guys I would not I would like be like a Yoda to myself and I would be like, no, don't do it. Put your wallet away. You will regret purchasing that product. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you kind of like these kind of videos or if you just like, they're a bit negative Nancy. I'm not meaning them to be negative. It's just, I feel like I should be as honest about products that I do regret purchasing as that I, like I don't, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, do you have products that you regret purchasing? Let me know. Make me feel better about myself. Don't leave me out here on an island, okay? Let me know the products that you regret purchasing in your collection. And if you had your time over, you just wouldn't do it. What are they for you? Okay, let's wrap this up, guys. If you haven't hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and the like button already, please go ahead and do that. It really helps my channel out. If you're watching until this point, you're just like a magical fairy. Like, thank you so, 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 so much. And I hope that you have an amazing day wherever you are in the world. And I will see you next time. Bye.